Talk, baby. This is the show where it's okay to be you. We're talking from Yale to jail and from the church house to the pit house. Nothing's excluded on Shop Talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and voice your opinion live every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Yeah, that's right. 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Don't forget to Shop Talk with your girl because right here, oh, we keep it real. All right, lovely people. All right, how we doing? Are we okay? I can't, let me see. Hold on, let me fix some things. Let me fix some things. Trying to do it on my own. It's a little complex. I ain't gonna lie to you. All right, I think we got it. I think I got it. I hope I have it. This is not my wheelhouse. (laughs) All right, and I think, mm, yep. We doing it. Mic check, mic check. Can you hear me okay? Can hear you just lovely. All right, yes, all right. All right, let's get busy. Good morning. Good Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> we got Nia on the line. Nia is on the line, lovely people. Let me get his number out because y'all already know how I do. I get to yapping and forget and... Be all into what we're talking about. The phone number here, if you want to call in live, is 619-902-2287. 619-902-2287. Shall we? Shall we shop talk today? Let me see what you're doing. Okay, I see your little cup. What your cup say over there? What's in my cup? It oh, says, it's go big or go home. Oh, now, ain't that the truth? <laughs> Exactly. Like I'm like, ain't that the truth? All right, for the listening mm-hmm. audience. I have my, you know, I have my elderberry and my tea, my sea moss in my cup. There you go. Uh, okay. Good tea. Mm-hmm. Good tea. <laughs> I got the energizer. The energizer right. tea. Yeah. Bright day. The good fun stuff. Right. The good fun stuff. Well, I had some questions from men. I got two shows going on for the listening audience. Let me put this out here. Um. I have men to inbox me questions. Okay. So I said, okay, I just need three women. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I have a show called Brown Skin. And it is, <coughs> uh, you all right, Nick? <laughs> the clear, okay, the clear and uncut conversations about us, brown skin people. So that's on Monday and that'll be at four o'clock. So Nia, if you're available, come join us. We got several women. We'll ask the questions that you guys asked, and we'll get it out there so you can know what we actually think. Email me the information, because I forget between now and Monday. Okay. um, Okay. Fortunately, I can't. (laughs) But I know I can email it to you, but I got to remember the information. I got it all written down. But there was one question that I want to jump into, and I just want to know your input. I got Nick the voice. Nick going to tell it, too. So that's a good thing, and I appreciate you coming on. So welcome. Let's give her a nice welcome, Nia. Hey, hey, hey. That's what we do. That is what we do. So we're going to jump right into it. I got one. (laughs) <laughs> Look at Nick ready. I got one to say, why are black women so angry? What, what are we angry about? I don't exactly. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So that that's a question to the person that introduced that question. Look, that's an oh. answer. <laughs> what are we angry about? That's what they want to know. Well, I'm I, tired of hearing that question. Okay, all right, so now I just had to get that. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of background, okay? Okay. The background is every time he goes to approach, and this is a Caucasian man, every time he goes to approach a black woman that he finds attractive, she comes off angry. And let me say, when I spoke to him, this is what what he got. He said, he used, because I asked, why did you use the term angry? And he said, because that's what's been instilled. So Mm. aggressive is what he changed it to. And I Mm. said, now you said aggressive. So we're going back and we're dialoguing. And I said, aggressive, um, what do you mean? I said, well, did you approach her? Or what? He was like, 
Well, it's almost like he's saying no disrespect, Mel, but it's almost like you go up and you go to pet a puppy. He was he was very listen. He was walking on eggshells. I said, come with it. You go to <laughs> pet a puppy and they just bark at you. They, <laughs> And I listen, I got it. When he said, when he gave me that analogy, I said, no disrespect taken. I got it. You know, and because you could just My imagine that. See, so there you go. There, that, that's his point. But I, his, but that was, that's his analogy. So he might have, you know, he might be familiar with puppies or dogs and like, okay, you go up and you think everything mm-hmm. is all well. That's a cute little puppy. Let me pet it. And it goes to bite you. So I thought so, that was, go ahead. No, go ahead. My first, question, my first question is how old is this person? Because maybe in my teens, I might've been like that, but I date interracial. And, you know, some people used to always say, oh, I thought you were so mean, but that was the me then, I guess. And they, I they, 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 wait, wait, wait. They thought you were so, I need you to be a little clearer. Go ahead. Me. Me. So, okay. Which is probably the aggressive part, you know, but that's the word they would use. So, okay. I, I, I don't know, I, and, and actually that woman whom he approached, maybe she wasn't used to a white man coming up to her, so or being approached by a man, period. So that might have came off like, whoa, what did you, you know, whoa, what do you want? Or maybe had a bad relationship, so I don't understand why, but that doesn't mean we're angry, but you did say you changed it to aggressive. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I would him to be on here, so we can ask him more questions, because I want to know what that means. <laughs> He look. Like, he probably don't want to be attacked no more. He's like, I'm not coming on there. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. No, sir. We are not mean. We are not aggressive. Well, some of us aren't. Um, so it all, like you said, also depends on how we approached her. We don't know how he approached her. You know, th- that can be an issue too because some men come off with a bull. Okay, wait, wait, that. wait, wait. Let me let me say this. He approached her to take her out to lunch. So okay. it, it, so I don't think that it would have been aggressive. Right. Okay. Okay. But you know, we have had encounters with, you know, men. Mm-hmm. I must say men in general, but a lot of our men that come off with that job. And yes, so therefore we may come off aggressive because that's a lot a lot of women are used to that. And men go on ahead with that book. We ain't trying to hear that. But not every woman is aggressive. Not every woman is on, you know, alert all the time like that. Maybe that just wasn't the woman for you, sir. I'm quite sure he's watching since he asked that question. He's listening. She may not have been the woman for you. So, you know, just don't get discouraged. Just you know, keep trying as long as you are coming mm-hmm. at you respectfully. You, will, you, hear, you hear my sister here? She said, come ask her. But as long as you're continuing to approach these women respectfully, and if they're coming off wrong, then that's not the one for you. Move to the next. I mean, it's just that simple. No, we're not angry. I mean, we have a lot to be angry about, but, you know, nah. What do we have a lot to be angry about, Nick? (laughs) We got a lot of, you know, women got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff on our shoulders, you know. uplifting our men and they act crazy and we can sometimes have some things to be angry about but no sir um, a, lot of us, a lot of us know how to put that in a box it, for the next right. person that's the one right. problem that exactly. women do have. we carry that baggage and then when that nice guy come along and ask you to take you out the person you're like well who's paying and this and that and that and third and then we come off how we right. come off in the past relationships where we might be blocking the blessing of the next man exactly Exactly. Okay. So yes, yeah, sir. If if you approach a woman and she, you know, angry, still, may, you know, if you want to act, ask her out still, and if she's still giving you that attitude, then on to the next because that relationship ain't gonna work. Okay. Um, thirty five years old. I got that. That's. Oh my god! Thirty five years old. Okay. Um. My thoughts are a little different. Okay, it might be a lot of different. Here's the thing. How you meet somebody, to me, this is to me, sir. (laughs) How you meet someone, it depends on, okay, first of all, it depends on how much work you plan on putting in. 
if a female comes off aggressive at the very on, at the onset, yes, just like my guest said, there may be some things from a previous relationship. How willing are you to work on that? Because what that's she presented her present. Absolutely. And and as females, we have the tendency to date potential. And that's why we may come off aggressive or angry because we have been in a relationship where we were dating the potential and not who the individual presented to us. Mm, So to you, sir, I say, how much work are you willing to put into that? Because if, if you see it at the onset, you know, it's going to come somewhere at the ladder. So that's just mine. <laughs> but I, I I appreciate you guys. I need you everything. You know what? And and it is. And it is. First impressions are. Now I will say this. Just what you brought up, Nia, you said when people they didn't know you and they thought you were mean. I didn't get that vibe. I got direct, assertive, which is not a negative. It's like, if you're going to come, come correct, and we can converse. Don't come sideways. I I thought it was a good thing. Now, when you say first impressions are everything, people don't know you and they prejudge you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Oh, this is directed to me? This is directed to you. You Since you really, mentioned it. Okay, well, good. Cause, you know, <laughs> I love when people misjudge me because they'll come back at the end years later and not have moved on. So take me, assume that I mean, assume all of that, but the right people come in my life. So I don't want you. Like you said, you didn't get that from me. That's why you're still here. Because I only want the positive. I only want the people that are accept, uh, assertive. I only want the people that come direct. Anybody else, y'all can stay back. That's why y'all feel some kind of way. Because y'all wish y'all could be like that. 100% every day, 24-7. That's oh. it. That's it. Okay. Go ahead, Nick. With Nick. I'm always being, I'm always being told I'm mean. You know, I have to explain to people... The way I am now is from the fact that when I was younger, I took a lot of people's mess. A lot of people took me for granted. Um, And they basically made me the way I am now to where I have no filter. So not mean, I just have no filter and I'm not taking no mess like I did back in the day. Because I would literally give my last, give my shirt off my back and people would give me their arse. I'm trying to be nice about that. <laughs> you know, I got the bell right here for you. I got the bell. Why, why, you know, why, why, you why do we? I'm not explaining no more. Like I'm not explaining that. I'm not explaining why I'm direct. I'm direct because there's no who else. Who, who, who else will do? Y'all step up and do it. Make you sit back and relax. I'm not explaining myself. We're grown. Okay. How old were you when you got to that place to say? So you want to be honest? I do. Probably in my early twenties. Okay. Late teens, early twenties. I've always been like that. That's why I said, baby, back in the day, they be like, "Oh, you're so mean." But no, now y'all see, no, it was not me. Now you changed the word to assertive or you know direct. So no, I was I was never mean. If people really know me, no, I'm not. They just don't come to me with no bull. <laughs> right. It, it, it was clear. Now, Nick, when I first met you, I saw a kind, loving, caring person, and it showed. Mm-hmm. It, it showed. And it was like, okay, let's do this. And we met, um, she came to an audition for a play that I was doing, How the Wife Becomes the Other Woman. And that book is still out there on Bible Press, Amazon.com, and (laughs) Barnes & Noble. You can purchase it. And I'm like, it's still there. Uh, (laughs) From the author, straight from the author. And when, when I met you and you came through the door, boom, and then you went straight into acting mode. And when I spoke with you, it was a nice, kind person. Interesting that you would say that society made you that way. Society does not realize how much they beat up on people and they cause p- 
people to change or let me say react. Right. So let me mm-hmm. let me reciprocate what you're giving that same energy you're giving me. Right. So so I get it. I get it. Yeah, I mean, and it's like I think when I hit 40, that's when I, the mouth went no filter. I don't give a you know what. And I hate to be like that because that's not how my mother raised me. Now, everybody, you know, my family's like, you act just like your daddy. Yes, I do. <laughs> when you bring that out of me. Okay. You know, that's that side that you don't want to see. And I try to always bring my mother's energy because she was the type that she, it, it took a lot for her to get mad. But when she got mad, you knew it. But she wasn't a wild cut like I do. I got that from my daddy. My mother was the type that she could tell you off and make you feel this big and be real nice to smiling. But you know, what but you know she meant business. Yes. Yes. Listen, I have learned. I'm still trying to channel that energy. Yeah, channel it. <laughs> channel, <laughs> channel it. Channel it. <laughs> Here's, I'm going to tell you something. Um, if I can give you just a little bit of advice. I have noticed that the word disappoint carries so much power when you tell someone that you disappointed me. It affects them more than a lashing, a cursing out or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, that word is so powerful. And what it does... What it does is let that other person who probably had no idea that you thought highly of them, let them know that you thought highly of them. You probably never voiced it. But that word to say disappoint, girl, to have people wondering, they'd be like this. Wait a minute. <laughs> what, do, right. how do, what happened? Because not knowing who someone is or how they think of you and just going off your first impression. And just because somebody has a dog on their face does or they may perceive it as a dog on their face, but they may be in deep thought does not mean that they're mean or that that is toward you. I had I was sitting out. I was sitting outside. I was in Dayton, Ohio. And I was sitting outside the, I gave someone a ride to the child support office. If you know me, I'm just like zone in my zone. And a guy, he walked past. I seen him walk past. I seen what he had on because I'm aware of my surroundings, but I still was in my zone. And then he walked back over toward the direction. You know, I was in the car back over to come to my car. Well, now I'm zoning in. And I looked, I said, can I help you? He's like, I was wondering if I did something to you. I said, hmm. And he said, you was looking at me, giving me the dog. And I was wondering if I did something. To, I said, um, I didn't even see you. I said, I said, I hope you don't get offended. I said, I didn't even see you. I saw the color red because he had on a red shirt. I said, and uh-huh. I, I noticed you when you came back. I said, so I really didn't see you. And he was like, oh, OK. And I said, and I'm giving someone a ride. I don't, we don't have children together and mine are grown. So you don't owe me no child support. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I was just in my zone. He was, and he, you know, he said, oh, okay. I apologize. And I said, what are you apologizing for? And he said, making an assumption. Oh, wow. And I thought that that was good. So on the other hand, even though that guy was a Caucasian man, that was a black guy on the defense. And I'm just sitting in the car in thought. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure he learned something from that as well. Right. Are y'all ready for this one? Y'all, you, you got your seatbelt okay. on. Y'all got your... Okay, look. Just, I gotta put it on. Let, look, I gotta move on. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> 23-year-old black male. Why? I'm going to re- Crazy because the way it's written, it pretty much said <laughs> it pretty much says, why is it that black females don't hold us down? He's 23, 23. He's 23 years old. It was two of them. The other one, probably they're probably around the same age. But why is it that black females don't hold us down? Now, let me give you a little background. They've only dated white girls 
You hear me say white girls, not women. White girls. But why is it that you won't give the black female a chance? Because they don't hold us down. Mel, tell us why they don't, why black women don't hold us down. Well, how do they know if we never try? Thank you. It might be that same thing. And it's 23. Hold you down how? You still by your mama or your grandma. Right. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm, I'm, is he listening? I'm calling, sir. I don't understand. <laughs> Explain yourself, young man. Explain right. yourself. First of all, you're 23. What you know about a black woman holding you down or not? <laughs> you ain't giving no black woman a chance. To trust me, a real black woman holds her man down through thick and thin. Really? Really? Not, this, not, not, this, not this black woman. <laughs> Not, not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nia. Hold you down. What? Okay. Hold, okay. What's wrong with holding them down for, I mean, like what? Like hold you down like you never had a car. You never going to get a car. I'm going to keep mine. No. I'm not like that. Not, you don't have a job. I'm going to let you sit on my couch, sleep on my couch. No. Not like that. Like, let's get our businesses together. Let's get our thoughts together. Let's run this campaign together. Let's work together, I'm going to hold you down like that because you're going to hold me down. But I'm not going to give you, you're not going to free ride. Let's, no. Okay. Right. And that's what I mean. I, I, knew, like, I knew what you meant. You were like, whoa, no. Like, I knew what she meant. I be pick her. I knew what she meant. But I, you got to make it clear for the listening audience, too. Because, yes. you know, because right. a lot of the listening audience, they can't see us unless they go to the YouTube page, Shop Talk with Mel. Oh, on exactly. YouTube, then you'll be able to see the reactions. Oh, right. <laughs> what I meant by holding down is what she said. We are doing things together. We are, you know, building together. And if there is a time that you are unable at that moment to do it, then yes, I'm going, as your wife, as your woman, I'm going to hold you down. Why? Not because you're being lazy or anything. It's because you have been doing it and at the moment you cannot. So, it's my turn to step up and hold you down like you've been holding me down the whole time. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's exactly what I meant. So, okay. So, Nick, are you married? Who, me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I need you to listen in audience to understand that. She's married, okay. and that's the difference. Um, regarding 23, I was married at 23 years old. So, you know, and these younger people, they're doing it. I'm like, you play in house, make it happen. Nia, you brought up something really good and you hit the nail on the head. And you probably have no idea. Way. I don't know if they, you, you didn't ask me. I'm not married, but okay. No, 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 no. I'm for that particular question. I'm when she was oh, when she was saying when she was saying hold it down, I was like, ah, yes. Right. When you said 23 years old, and that's the thought. And you said you should still be with your mother or grandmother. Mother's not around. Raised by the grandma. Okay. That's why I put grandma in there too. So, so now speak to that. Being 23 and raised by your grandmother? And why that thought is there. Why do you think that that thought like black women don't hold oh, you down? He's still young. Like he's still, I mean, number one, the question was why black women, black girls, whatever. Uh -huh. And he never dated one. That's a young mind. That's a young man's thought. A young boy. He's still a young boy. He's still learning. So at 23, don't be turned off by not uh, whatever you thought you heard or whatever you're hearing. Give us a try, too. You know, I mean, but I get it. But I'm not going to sit like, like I said, I date white men. So I love both. Like my kids, my ex are black. So it's not that I'm I'm pushing them off and saying I don't I'm not I'm giving up on them. It's just that I like dating all. That's what single women do. They date and date and date. And date. So. Okay, Nia Cinco. The phone number here is 619-902-2287. Um, my thoughts on that one, and I and I know that they're listening because I wouldn't give the answer then. That is like you said, how do you know if you didn't give a chance? Because their first introduction, their first introduction. It's the grandma or whoever raised them. The, right. So if grandma is stressed, and I'm just making an assumption, she's yelling. Mom mm -hmm. is not in the picture. 
And they think by choice, drugs, because I asked all those questions. Okay. So mom chose the street. So if your first introduction is, sorry, uh, okay. if your first introduction is, um, is abandonment, that could potentially affect your future. And your thoughts on, if this is my first introduction of a black woman, and then I look, if I have aunts, I didn't go that deep, or you know what I mean? And then you look at, you 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 mimic what you see, or maybe you refuse not to mimic it because it's not a big, a pretty picture. Absolutely. So that is where that could potentially be from. Um, I will say it's so interesting how, like now when you look at a 23 year old, like back when I was 23, married, the whole responsible thing. Mm -hmm. And you look at these 23 year olds and you're like 13, you know, still like mentally, like "Mm, you're not ready. So so I, I totally get it. It's like, wait, what's going on? You're still young. And that young him and his brother, you know, mm-hmm. right? It's like, wait a second. So the ones that are that they think at that age, twenty three, and help me if I'm wrong, or let let us know. Hold them down is give them what they want, and don't say no. That's what I got. Like, okay, you need this here. I'm right here with you. I'm boom, boom, boom. Kind of like how these upcoming NFL drafted. You know what I'm saying? And then. You look and it's like, who's in the circle? Okay, that's who's holding them down. But this, um, the girl he was with the whole time sitting there, she may not be able to hold you down for a listening audience. I'm, you know, looking like I got money making it rain. <laughs> they may not be able to hold you down, but this one might have mommy and daddy's money and giving it to you. And you're looking at that age as holding you down, as giving, giving you what you want. You know what? I think a lot of the young guys also, it's not even about money anymore because a lot of them can make their own money. These millennials is on something different than, than the generation before um, or us at that young age. I think it's more what they need. Hold them down maybe on what it is that they need. They need that nurturing. They need somebody to talk to them. I, I mean, I'm just assuming or guessing or helping, I guess. <laughs> I want to know. Go ahead, Nick. Did how do you think, how can we rectify this situation or change, reboot their hard drive to think differently about the younger black woman? This is for to a young person. So if you would tell your nephew, if your nephew asked you that question, what would you say to him? You know, I, would just, uh, I mean, I would let him know. First of all, you have to find the right one. You have to have the same interest. Sit there and talk and get to know each other because You can't make an assumption if you don't know anyone. You have to talk to that individual, get to know them, find out if you're compatible. You know, if you're not, there's nothing wrong with just being friends. You ain't got to do nothing and just keep searching. But yeah, we, the younger generation, y'all need, definitely need to reboot. And and, I mean, go back to the old school. Like we was. They don't know that younger, their old school is six. (laughs) (laughs) They six years (laughs) old, they old school. school. A lot of parents, with some of these younger ones, they they want to teach them a different way. But sometimes a different way don't work. If the old school way that we were was taught when we grew up, if that worked, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yes, a lot of these younger children are entitled and this and that. And if they don't get their way, it's a whole attitude. Yeah. But as far as that, you, you like, I it definitely advise my nephew. You need to sit down and get to know somebody before you make an assumption. That was first and foremost. Okay, okay. Um, you brought up something that I thought was valid just then, when you said, "If it's not broke, don't fix it." Some people in our generation did not like the way they were brought up, so it was broken. Mm-hmm. They were right. able to get everything that they could, you know, that their friends had. So it was more so, and I've watched it. I'm going to make sure that my kids get everything that I didn't get. And I call it the generation of entitlement like now mm-hmm. because everything is given. And me, not earned. yeah, me personally, I, I 
had to earn everything I got. People thought that I got the world, but trust and believe I had to do what I needed to do. People didn't know that I had to. And back then it got on my nerves, but now I understand. I had to read the dictionary, write the words in the dictionary starting at A. A lot of people didn't know that. They just look like, oh, you mail, you get everything you want. No. Okay, we do these 10, the next 10 words, the next 10 words. And I had to write out those definitions. It worked for me now. <laughs> but back right, then, right. before I could go outside and play, that's right. what I had to do. And I brought up in the church, I had to participate. Okay, so mm-hmm. it wasn't just a, oh, okay, you just sit there, boom. Homework had to be done. Could not bring in bad grades. Or guess who wasn't going skating? Me. If you weren't going to church. <laughs> look, you could, And I was able to do it all. I was at every concert there was. But I had to put in some work to do it. it nothing was ever like, here you go, hand it. So they were like, Mel, did you ever get whoopings? Uh-huh. I did. <laughs> yeah, you know, I did. Not many. But to me, at that age, those were the whoopings for me. It was like, oh my goodness, I got to hurry up to Friday show. I'm writing down definitions. You know, it's like, ah. Right? It's what's, what part of the sentence? Pronoun. I had to write all of that. Like, you know, noun, pronoun, adjective. You know, the little part that was in the um, parentheses. Everything. Right. And to this day now, and guess what? I didn't do that to mine because I remember how I felt. Is it, a, it what, did I do them a disservice? Kind of, I think so. <laughs> like, they probably would be like, boom, but they still get it. And, but what I make them do is to look it up. Go to the library. The Google, okay, you go to the Google and I have to let them know. Sorry, I'm off track a little bit, but I got to let you, uh, the listening audience know. Google. I can put something on Google. You can put something on Google. It does not mean it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Right. People need to, everybody can put something out there on the internet and you can read it. It does not mean that it is accurate. Just like my be inspired. Listen, that is from me to the world. Do your own research. You got to do your own research. Now back on track. Right. <laughs> like, like, like now back on track. When you, when you actually, when you think that you're doing, you know, like, okay, well, I'm doing them a favor. You're making it worse. Um, we're going to do that. Say that for another show. I ain't, I ain't boom. Cause y'all know this is a no judgment zone here. All right. Next guy question. I don't know what's happening or what was going on, <laughs> but it was going on. 40 years old, married, <laughs> did it the right way, problem, okay. you ready for this, he said he did it the right way, he didn't have sex, oh, okay, I'm like, what's the what, right yeah, he didn't have <laughs> sex with his wife, so the question is, were you a virgin when you stepped into it, no, he wasn't, but he wanted to s- save his wife, you know, boom, she was a virgin, right. And the sex was not good, and she refused to do certain acts. This is a family show. So, <laughs> okay. And she, he married a black woman. However, in his previous relationship, he was married to a white woman who introduced him to new things. He doesn't, that's funny. Yeah, he's listening. I got it. <laughs> I got it. That's why I looked over and stopped like, huh? Um, okay. He doesn't want to leave his relationship and he keeps talking to his wife about different things and she refused and he refused to go to counseling. Oh, so he refused on his end too? On his end, he's refusing to go to counseling. She wants to go to counseling. He doesn't want to go to counseling and Wait, wait. He doesn't want to go to counseling. He wants certain um, certain activities in the bedroom that she's refusing to do. Oh, key. They've been married for five years, so he gave it some time. I, I say he gave it some time. Um, well, first, and he don't want to cheat on her. Are they in? Are they? Are they in the church? Is she from the church? She grew up in the church. Yes. 
Yeah, that's okay. Number one, that's the first problem. Uh-huh. Um, and he doesn't want to talk, talk to another man because she wants to the counseling to be with the pastor. Well, well, no. So, what, okay, he wants something and she wants something. Why can't they start it off with counseling? It might start off in counseling. Exactly. That, uh, that, I mean, and, and in church, it's like, I, I understand what, he, what she's doing and I understand what he's doing. I mean, I understand both sides because in the church, they teach you, they say the bed is the foul, but at the same time, you teaching them to like to be afraid of everything. So, I think counseling is the start of it because she might like the type of thing. I mean, that's her husband, and y'all need to please each other. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being in the church and getting your groove on. That's what y'all supposed to do in the bedroom. Exactly. So start off, start off with counseling and see where it goes. It might help out. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Nick. Okay. Um, first off, so <laughs> yes, counseling would help. Um, they need to meet each other 50-50. They yeah, it's like, um, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Y'all just need counseling. Sir, listen, go ahead and meet your wife halfway. Wife, meet him halfway. Please start off with counseling. It don't have to be with the pastor. It could be with anybody. But then again, some of these new age pastors are aware of what's going on, especially if they've been out there before and they know. And they may very well tell her there's nothing wrong with certain sexual acts because you were with your husband and not with somebody out on the street. You know, mm-hmm. it. and sis, baby, this is the number three for me, so I'm going to tell you. You <laughs> got to do whatever you need to do to please your husband and keep him at home. Absolutely. Keep him at home. Now, trust me, I did. I, I, I did. But then the other two, then they was just, yeah, anyway, we ain't going to go there. Hmm. Okay. But we can't. In order to the right. keep your man home and not roaming, you got to do what you got to do, boo-boo. You got that ring. Y'all said I do. And, you know, it, you know, the Lord expects us to please our man, period. He didn't say how that. Now, no, what Bible that's in. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you marry you you say that in the Bible but Look, them guys gonna be loving you Nick they're gonna be like yeah I didn't say it, say it but, in the Bible. You know but, I think, but you know what I meant when you I say when you become before the eyes of the Lord and you saying them vows for better or for worse for richer for poor all of that so like when you mm-hmm. saying them vows and you doing it in front of the Lord Listen, the Lord expects you to plead your wife, your wifely duties. Right. Man, I applaud, your wife. I applaud him for saying that he doesn't want to go out at this relationship right. because a lot of men don't care. Like, yeah, okay, they got their little wife at home that's doing everything, but that little factor <laughs> is a lot. That's why they that's that Sex is a big part of a relationship. However, you might have you could be at home and have all the sex in the world, and then you don't have that uh, that um, whatever they need that that security or whatever, and that's why they go out. So it could go both ways. But right, take care of your husband, sis. Please, that's all I'm saying. friend. And he's being faithful. He trying because he could have been like some of the rest of these men. I ain't gonna call them out. Then I ain't gonna call y'all. Call them out. Call them out. Don't you just. <laughs> But anyway, being like what him going on about his business, he is holding on. He is being very faithful. Says, sir, if you're listening, get your wife in on this conversation real quick, please, because I'm gonna need to tell her. I'm at number three, and I'm gonna tell you, I did everything with both of them, everything under the sun that we could do. We was married, and I wasn't embarrassed about it. I ain't embarrassed now because I'm a married woman. Right? They didn't do nothing for me, you know, and they still went and did them. So, like, you know, this one, we hmm, started out rocky, but we've been doing good now. And, like, you got to please your man. And if you got one that's remaining faithful and not trying to step out, baby, you better step up. Because the next woman is just waiting. Okay. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, here, here's, here's my thoughts. <laughs> and we got some comments. 
and I don't know how to work this iPhone. That's what I'm trying to do. Nick, if you could, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't even see the car. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. It's stuck on my end here because it's lagging. So I'll Okay, get it. don't worry about it. All right, we're going to grab it. Give me give me a second, people. Um, on, <laughs> on my thing here, they're married for five years. Prior to getting married, I think counseling is important prior to because that situation could have been avoided. Like, right. you know, okay, well, maybe I don't need to marry this person if this is what I desire and they're not there yet. You know what I mean? Those are things that need to be discussed prior to. Now, with um, with her wanting to have counseling with the pastor, if it were me, I, I'm not a guy, but I'm going to speak from a female's perspective. If my husband want to go and it's a female pastor and she, she wants to go to counseling to discuss our issues and their sexual issues with the pastor, I will have a problem because I don't need that woman knowing what my husband is doing or not doing. Because guess what? Pastors are people and people will people. Let's keep it real, okay? It's like, okay, on Sunday, you the pastor, and God is using you to deliver the word, but you're still a person. Now, um, like I said, I'm not a male, so I'm going to have to do a show where I get my men on. I see you. I see. I'm getting texts. We need to be on. But <laughs> I hear you. I see the texts. But I'm not a male. I don't know if it's almost, to me, it's almost like, you have, your husband has a best friend. Am I insecure? Not at all. You had, if you had the best friend prior to us and ladies, I'm going to put this out here. She should not be a threat to you. She should not be a threat to you because they would have been together and you wouldn't even be in the picture. You might be a threat to her if she had plans for him, but she shouldn't be a threat to you because he chose you. One, yep. two, can't no other female, even a mother-in-law, tell me how to run my household. So that's where I would have an issue. That's where I would have an issue. And, and that's why I had understanding where he didn't want to go to her pastor for counseling. Even, okay. you know, and, and counseling is not bad, but that's another whole show. And I'm going to have to get the men on and ask them why is, why is it that men don't want counseling so we can get the truth <laughs> from a male. Right. But somebody outside, and that is just me, am I for counseling? Yes. So you can have the neutral person that has no skin in the game. No, right. you know, just like, okay, boom, boom. I don't care either way. You know what I mean? But you got to go with someone that you don't know. That would be my suggestion. Neither one of you know. Then that way they won't waver to that side. Right. Somebody, yep. somebody, somebody fresh or stranger to both y'all. I definitely understand and, that. I'm, I'm, um, more, I'm, I'm more apt I'm, to accept. Right. Um, you know, what's your thoughts on this for somebody that don't know me? They don't know that person. And they don't need to. They'd be like, well, you're just talking about just what's today. But this has been going. If they don't know you, they have no skin in the game. They're telling you what they see at the moment. So do I think counseling is helpful? Yes. But I think you do need to get a neutral person. Do I think that female um, was wrong? Excuse me. Um, she's just not interested. And prior, And he did it the right way. See, he didn't test the water prior to. Right. <laughs> Which I got but my own thoughts, but I don't want look, look, I got my own thoughts. <laughs> but they should right. But they should have they should have had that conversation prior to. And they and you know what? And they probably did. And they probably we don't know, but they probably yeah. did. I was like, yeah, I'll do that and I'll try that. And then when it comes down to it, you're like, eh, no, I already got you. Why do I need to do it anymore? And some guys, yeah. but some guys feel like that too, though, how man. You, you know that. How you want to keep them, boo boo. <laughs> how you get them is how you keep them. Oh, yeah. right. but you, but you, well, she ain't do nothing before him. <laughs> right. And, and look, and got them. Look, and got them. <laughs> but now that you got them, you got to do what you got to do to keep them because the next woman is just way around the corner. I'm telling you. And, 
And and you would know. And you have people online. Listen, the nerds is winning. The nerds is winning right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's their time. Really, though, you, when you say to keep them, and I saw Anitra. Anitra had a post. This is social media for my listening audience on Facebook. On the social media, it was, <laughs> and it said, what um. I learned from my ex. He said, date them fine because ugly MFs cheat too. <laughs> so looks do matter. You know how they be like, looks don't matter. He was like, get them good looking because the ugly ones cheat too. So who want to get cheated on by an ugly cat? For real. You done built up their self-esteem. They thinking they all that didn't want to treat you like trash. You're like, hold up. Hold, beast, remember I was the beauty <laughs> and you were the beast. Yeah, you you the beast. Like I, you know, be, be, beauty that built up his confidence, right. and now he want to act all different. Okay, well, but look, I beauty go. A couple ugly ones that came out the box, like, and I, you know, I didn't have the nerve to say, "I know I'm fine, nigga." Sorry, do quit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got it. Go ahead, though. That's a $5 sign. $5. $5. Yeah. Go ahead, though. And you coming off cocky with me? Boy, man, this ain't, I, I'm not the female that you want to come off cocky with. Because I got that attitude and I'm going to come right back at you. Okay, wait, though. Wait. Nia, have you dated somebody who was not so attractive and then you built up their confidence and they try to tear yours down? I, I don't think so. Okay. I have, I have, I've dated somebody I'm, that was, I'm, I gotta go make your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have, and let me tell you, not that they just told you like, boom, 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 you know, you ugly, you this, that, Re things that people say gradually, like, it's like taking a sledgehammer and just knocking on your wall, like you built it up and it's like, boom, 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 it just they're chipping away at it, chipping or a chisel, Chipping away at it and can be like, oh, okay. Well, maybe, and when you could critique, some men call it critique, mm -hmm. depending on okay. the status of the individual. I'm just giving you constructive criticism. Well, eventually, constructive criticism can chisel away at your self esteem. But we as women need to pay attention to that. You know, before, mm -hmm. oh, you are beautiful, that looks lovely. And then you put on something, you don't look good in that. You know, you look good in it. The other people saying you look good in it. But there, this is the ugly cat, okay? We still on the ugly cat, okay? <laughs> Telling you, oh, okay, you should do, um, you shouldn't wear that. You should do, hold on. And the ugly cat watching your meal and the ugly cat, you need to watch your calories. Don't worry about mine. You know, so that stuff, people, people, and, and it comes off and then they'll flip it. Watch ladies, because I'm, I'm just here to let you know, it's called emotional abuse. And it slides yep. in gradually. Mm -hmm. And you can be like, boom. And then you look at that person like, well, what happened to so-and-so? They used to be boom, boom, boom. Somebody is gradually chipping away mm -hmm. and chiseling away right. and saying it's constructive criticism when it's just to knock you down because they can't meet your expectations. So they're going to bring you down to where they are. So you have to watch it. Now, that didn't happen to, that didn't happen to me because I'm quick with it. My right. self esteem so high. My self esteem so high. As soon as you start, I'm like, I have to. Oh, I like me. You, you ain't know right. that I like it. That's what attracted you to me. I like me so I much. Mean, <laughs> many have tried because you know I've always been the big girl. Always had the big chest, and they was known for the big chest. And when I had my reduction, that you know everybody was just in awe, shock, and like, why did you do that? Because I've got tired of y'all referring to me as big titty Nikki and all this. I, you know, not the, no big booty like, you know, some of them like, and I've had females and males try to tear me down. Guess what? Guess what I tell them? Even in all my big, my big fat, flat booty self, I still managed to get three husbands. Some of y'all heifers can't even get in, a, in one engagement. So miss me with it because my self-esteem is high. Dudes, too. You talk crap. A lot of them talk crap and want to cap and everything and talk, you know, crack jokes in front of other people. And then call you, the they call you after them. everybody leave. Thank you. And guess <laughs> what? Listen, you got me. Uh, nah, we ain't doing that. Oh, I'm here's, here's my 
my question to that because I've always had a self esteem, how high self esteem as well, and I don't know how because all these men when we were younger they talk about dark skinned women all the time, but I always had self esteem. Why is it because we have self esteem we're labeled bougie? Exactly. Why is it, men? I need the men to chime in. Where y'all at? Why we got to be bougie? Because we got high self esteem. I'm not bougie, but I know my parents <laughs> raised a queen, a beautiful black queen. So therefore, that's why I got the confidence I got, and I'm not gonna let nobody tear it down. Right. No, it's because we have what standards. It's not even about having high standards. In the right. Year. Standards. Period. Means you bougie. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. Not at all. Okay, um, all. I'm gonna go to a viewer, viewer comment, and this I finally figured this out. <laughs> like I finally got to it. Um, this goes back to the guys who feel as though why black women don't hold them down. Mm-hmm. Amor says they know the chances of us taking care of them are very unlikely, and. The other ones were like, amen and all that other stuff. So I don't know what that was too, because I'm looking. Um, oh, okay. Elena says, did their man take care of them? Wondering. So I don't know what that's too. I can only just go off of it. So I don't know if that was a question to you guys. Like, I, I don't know what that was for. But we, we talked about that. We yeah. said that if they help, we help each other. That's what holds down right. me. It's not, we're not taking care of no man. And no man should take care of any woman. But right. we should take care of each other. So okay. we talked about that. Okay. I'm, exactly. Okay. <laughs> the, you know, um, the whole take care of thing. Uh, tell, tell me this, and then I'm going to go to the next question, fellas. Look, <laughs> like, I'm like, and then I'm going to go to the next question. Um, the, would you date a guy who had no money? Have done it. Oh. Mm-hmm. Then you've oh. done that. Mm-mm. Okay. How, 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 how was that, Nia? For you? Um, you know what? Honestly, I was in a very long relationship with him because it was, for me, I could do it. It was okay. Like where I, um, where I was helping us, it was cool, and then he helped on the other end. But then it got to a point where um, he was like, like you said, chipping away. It wasn't that he was being emotionally abusive or anything like that. Chipping away at like, now I'm bougie, because now I want to do this and that and the third, and you can't. Now I'm wrong? I'm, no. The fruits of my labor, I should be able to enjoy it. So it kind of was like he was um uh, just not not having self esteem, I guess. Like not feeling like he was the man in the house. And once you once that happens, then bye. I can't. So now I look at it like I need you to have a little bit more because if not, you're going to regret it. I see it, but a man will be like, "Well, no, you took. Oh, you think you took good? No, I see what's going to happen down the line." Okay. So you have to come with some kind of substance, or it's not going to work. I know it's not going to work. Okay, go ahead, Nick. Have uh, you? I was trying to read one of the comments that kind of long. But yeah, I have dated a couple dudes with no money. And it, it, it is a hassle, especially if they not trying to do nothing or they like just automatically expecting you to do all the time, bro. I'm, I'm going to need you to get together, get some money from somewhere. I don't care if you got to stand on the corner. I need you to get some money from somewhere, please. But yeah, that it, you know, and you want to be behind them. And, and the one guy I, I was behind him, I tried to, I, t- cause he, expressed how he wants to go back to school and what he wanted to do. So I took him down to Penn State, you know, to sign him up for classes. And I tried to, you know, hold him up and, okay, because and, he's a very smart person. I let him, you're very smart. You don't have to be on the street trying to get money like you're doing. You're not very good at it. Trying to sell drugs and stuff. And I really tried to <laughs> uphold him and, and help him out. And he just wasn't. Gonna act right now. He's doing good now because we still keep in contact with each other. We're still friends. He's doing good now for himself, and I'm glad. But it took him having to go back and forth in and out of jail for a minute for him to finally get it at the age of forty something. Okay. And um, and it's like this is what I tried to do, and he was like, and this is why what he told me. And I was like, well, what happened with us? You doing good now? And he was like, because. 
you, I felt like you were too good for me. And you were, he said, I know now you only have my best interest at heart. He said, but at the time I wasn't ready and you were pushing me where I didn't want, I, I expressed an interest to you and you took it and ran with it. And he said, I wasn't ready yet. He was but, like, and, and see, you know what? I'm glad you said that. Well, that's a problem. Don't come in here lying. Right. Don't, don't, don't come in here lying, acting like you want to do A, B, and C, and D because you know this is where I'm at. So now you get in there, then you want to get an attitude when somebody is supporting you. So to right. the young man who said, hold uh, hold us down, how come black women don't like to hold people down? Oh, we'll hold you down. The problem is you gave false pretenses. Exactly. And that but, happens. You know, that happens, right. that yeah. happens a lot. And it, right. I see where... It happens. It's like you come off like you're confident and then you got self-esteem issues once you're in the relationship and you be like, okay, well, I'm here and you came off like this and now you got issues and now you're real needy. That's a problem for someone who has high self-esteem. Somebody with high self-esteem and conf- a confident individual because you don't have to, you could be confident and not have high self-esteem and that'll be maybe i'll do that on another be inspired right. and break it down <laughs> for you but if you have confidence and a guy comes in as if he has confidence and then you guys are together and then they're in they turn insecure bye i ain't got time listen i'm telling you will kill yourself messing with me right that's <laughs> Wait, let me let me. I got to I got to finish this because I don't want nobody killing themselves. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I don't want you killing yourself, but with me, if you come in looking for me to pay you a whole lot of attention and take the attention off me and put all of my energy into you, don't come for me. You're right. Don't even (laughs) don't waste your time. I'm I'm gonna tell you that right now because you gotta have your own. As far as money situation, I want to. Give you my view on that. Will I date someone with no money? Absolutely not. I I have a son. I don't expect anything from my son. There is no way that I'm going to date someone who has no money. Now, if we are in a relationship and something happens and he can't take care of himself, because that's the thing. No money. Can you take care of yourself? That's it. I'm not asking you to even take care of me. Can you take care of yourself? And then you build together. But if you cannot, don't come for me. Right. If we are in a relationship and you could, and then something happened tragically, hear me well, something happened tragically where you couldn't take care of yourself because now you can do a YouTube and make money. You do something. Right. <laughs> then right. I got you because we're in this together. Now, the uh, for the married couple, honestly... My, I believe in that. Why buy the cow when you could get the milk for free? I believe it on the reverse side. Because guess what? I am not going to treat you like a husband until you are a husband to me. So you ain't going to ever get all of me until we say I do. Mm-hmm. So I ain't putting in all that work. People are like, girl, you're going to get a husband. I'm... I am not putting in all that work for him to think about saying, will you marry me? Uh-uh. Nope. Right. Nope. Nope. All right. Go ahead. What, what did you have to say? Uh, Nia, did you forget? Uh, no, I don't. I think I said everything. I'm good. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say something. Go ahead, Nick. Anything? Mm-hmm. Nope. I right, listen. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. On, on that bougie. When guys say you are bougie, it's just my thought, fellas. Let me know if I'm wrong. You probably are gonna say I'm wrong, but my thoughts on that bougie thing—that is because they want you to come down. They want your expectations to come down to meet them. <laughs> to, to meet them, you know, they'd be like, "Oh, you hasa diddy." Uh, clearly, you're not the one for me if you are not willing. To do what I expect you to do to get me. I'm not gonna dummy down for anybody. Get, right. a, get a dictionary. Mm-hmm. Get a book, read you it. Know, I um I just recently on Facebook, one of my cousins had posted and they said, a flex to some is normal for others. 
So to that person, they thought you were flexing when you're used to the things that you're used to. If I'm used to the things that I'm used to, or even if I grew into liking the things that I'm used to, that's not being bougie. That's thinking outside of the box. Thinking right. outside of Youngstown. Let's talk about that. Some of you don't even know how to even leave the city. So come on. Like, I no, we're not bougie. You're just not used to dating someone like us. You're not you're used to you're not used to talking to someone like us. So no, we're not coming down to your thing. Uh uh-uh, uh, that's old. We do that as a team. We're not doing that no more. Even though we heard all over the world right now. <laughs> If you say where we from, they might come sideways because would it have Youngstown as the <laughs> poorest city? They might be like, I want that to do nothing. Listen, I was in Houston and told somebody where I live. I was in Houston and told somebody where I live. And they was like, ooh, do I need a gun to be around you? <laughs> really? Is it that bad? Sure. Sure, you go ahead and bring it. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, um, go ahead. What did you want to say, Nia? I, didn't know, I was just going to use an example. I had a guy that um, that I was dating, I wanted to date, and I asked him, I was like, let's go to Niagara Falls for um, lunch, and then we can come back. And they were like, why would we go all the way out there? Why would we do that? Why would we do that? And this is before COVID all that, you know, so we were allowed to go up and come back. And, and, it, and in my head, I immediately realized everybody is not going to think like that. You have to find your person that is open to it. Now, years later, he came back and said, you know, remember when, yeah, I do. I haven't done it yet, but you're not the one that I'm going to do it with when I do. So, um, I, I, you know, you it's, you have to be introduced to some things in order to think outside the box. And I clearly understand there are a lot of people here that are not like that. We are not bougie. We are normal. We're not, not flexing. We are normal. Find your, your normal and stay with that. It's not a all right. right, we're going to a viewer. I don't give up. I'm not saying that. <laughs> what men That's don't... What read. That's hold what on, I hold on. Let me finish. What men don't like about my shape, I'm still Monica, and my shape does not define the amazing, beautiful, loyal, confident, black Native American queen I am. And yes, you are, sis. You know I love you for it. Okay. Now, for um, I wanted to completely read that for the listening audience. It is true. There, just like what Nia said, you'll find that one for you. That is not the one for you. That is not. And and here's what's interesting: what somebody says about you, it is your choice to believe it. It's your choice to believe it. Just like when you were talking about. Um, how they called you big titty Nikki and all that other stuff. Okay. If it was some facts in it, that's what you noticed, but you still noticed me. And that's, that's where we have to, we have to reboot our thinking. Everything is not a negative. If you reboot your hard drive and you look at things as positive, you notice what they notice. Thank you. And if you don't like it, it's up to you to do something about it, but don't allow Mm -hmm. others to afflict their shortcomings on you or their dislikes on you because they got a life and they can do what they want to do with theirs and you do what you want to do with yours. I used to always be upset about people talking about me and this and that. You know, when my mom used to tell me and I had to start thinking that way when I was young, what others think of you is none of your business if it's not positive. It's the truth. And see, that's, and that's key. What others think of you is none of your business because it is their fault. Yep. It's it's their thought. Like, she was okay. like, so what they don't like you, uh just it, that just goes to show you you ain't think about them, but but you're always on their mind. I'm I'm Absolutely. telling you. Yeah, you're noticed. <laughs> you're mission yep. accomplished. Mm-hmm. You're noticed. And that's mm-hmm. it. And what their thoughts, see everybody has opinions, and that's what we need to understand. Everyone has an opinion, and what they don't like is none of your business, like your mom said. And that's their thought, but they noticed right. you. Exactly. So mission accomplished. Look, I'm like, and so always me. noticed me. That's why I'm the confident person I am now, because y'all <laughs> folks used to talk. Okay, Nick, um, Nick, I know you ain't gonna be on Maury. I know you ain't gonna be on Maury. Talk about look at me now. No. I, <laughs> I, 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 
Y'all felt like that about me. You talked about me like a dog, but the thing is, you talk about me like a dog all the time. I always had my mouth on your tongue coming out your mouth. You thought about me. I was on your mind. But it was something so. that you obviously deep down inside liked about me that you, that, that you couldn't uh, meet up to. And guess <laughs> what? Now, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop you because you clearly was affected by it because you're giving them time. So that's when you have to say they're not a thought to you because you're still thinking about what they did. So you just got to sit there and be like, let it no, go. I'm just using no, it let, hear, hear me. No, but hear me. Mm-hmm. Hear, hear me clear. You don't want to give them time or power. If somebody did you wrong, it is so important. If you feel as though they did you wrong and you want that aha, got him moment, you don't mm-hmm. have to say a word. A picture is worth a thousand words. Don't give them the opportunity to even live off of it. Because I'm going to tell you, if I was that person, I'd be like, that y'all still thinking about that. She's still <laughs> thinking about, no, she's still thinking about me. And what I said, I don't, I was a little kid. I don't even remember none of that. You know what I mean? And that's what I, that's why I said that. I said, like, I know you're not going to be on Maury. Because I, when I watched the Maury show and <clears throat> looking at the reaction of the people, and they be sitting there like, who? That's when it's, you know, when they go and they re, you know, fix their little life, fix their body, yeah. work out, oh, then they come back and the person is sitting there and they like, look at me now. And that person that may have said something that had no idea to what extent, <laughs> you know, it caused, you know, what harm it caused. And they're like, who, wait, well, oh, and then they're looking at them as an adult and saying, ah, you look great. I didn't know that. So we have to, as an adult, we have to remove ourselves from whatever age that scar was. And this is not just to you, Nick. That's just for a listening audience, somebody out there. If you feel as though that people bothered you and that stuff does scar you, you have whatever age you were, let's say if you were 11 or 12, you just went back to that 12 year old self. You, you, mm. it, it might take effort, more work. But just remember the age that you are now and you have to look back and reevaluate yourself and say, how have I grown? And just know it for yourself and write it down, make it plain. That's what my mother used to say. Write it down. You read it and say, this is how I've grown until you actually get to that place where you totally 100 percent believe it. I. Oh, uh, trust me. I believe that's all you say. Is me, you going on? No, uh, there's no need to go on more because I know I'm, you ain't going on more. I won't let I'm you go here. on more. I'm, I'm not gonna let you. Let me find out you going on more. It better be more than fifty dollars. <laughs> it better be more than fifty dollars they give you. That. I'm <laughs> like, you are not going on no. this show. We're not doing that. No, we are okay. But that, do, like, wait, the yeah, listen, listen, I gotta go. Wait, 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 hold that. Cause you could we can do that in the appendage. I need to get this last one out. Do okay. you do you have a problem dating a man who makes less than you? No. He's making money, so no. Well, he have a plant problem with me making more than him. <laughs> well, we gotta ask the men that question. Right. But but you know what? Remember we had that question, Nick. Remember Rugo answered it. He said that one of his friends did it. He was like, "Well, you just put celebrities, supermodels, actresses, all you just eliminated all of them." If you have a problem with dating somebody who makes more than you, okay. Right. Um, you kind of touched on this other one, so I just like let it go. And that was when a man doesn't make money. They feel like the women don't respect them. So this this particular situation, he lost his job. And he said it was nothing that she did. He was in a long, long relationship. Three years. Okay. He was in a um, three year relationship and he lost his job and he felt some type of way. And it wasn't and they broke up behind it. And he realized that it wasn't her. It was him. And he felt that she was belittling him. And she didn't even say anything. And he said he would just start arguments. So kudos to you for addressing that. He would start arguments with her because he was upset at his shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Actually, he said he got laid off. There was a lot of men like that. Like when, when, you know, the meals were popping back in the day and you know my dad 
it, the one here in, in Sharon, it uh-huh. closed down. There's a couple of them. Uh, he felt like that. And my mom was like, why are you, you know, like, want to start arguments and doing different things. But then he ended up going to Chicago and getting into the other affiliate in Chicago, you know, working. But after being like, I think about a year or so, you know, because he was you know, we're living off unemployment. But he was always evil and mean. And, you know, my mom was a nurse. She was doing her thing, taking care of the house like always. But she had his back. And my dad knew that, but he was just some men are just in their feelings because they're used to being the man of the house. And when something like that happens, they don't know how to take it. They don't want their woman to have to bear the burden that they think they're supposed to bear. So yes, some of them have that complex, but bruh, that's not just, if, if she is not literally belittling you, if she's trying to hold you down until something else come along, that's your mindset. That's an, uh, another where we need, and black folks don't like to do it, talk about counseling. You need some counseling if you feel like that. And if she's literally not belittling you, and she's literally trying to have your back during your low period, and you're thinking that way, that's your mindset. You need to talk to somebody about, about that. You need to seek counseling for that. And, you know, our people are bad about that. They don't want to go talk to nothing. We don't want nobody in our business, this and that. It ain't about getting nobody in your business. You ain't got to tell Gunquisha next door. That's telling people your business. You go to someone professional and a stranger, like you said, Mel, and talk. And let the, you know, that's what they're, that's what they went to school for. That's what they get paid for. Not your neighbor down the street, around the corner, not your auntie that didn't like old girl anyway, or old boy. That's getting people in your business. But if you're going to a licensed professional that is there to help you, there's nothing wrong with that. So and our you, people are bad about that. So they you, don't want to see. So no, you were a child. All. You were a child, and you actually witnessed that. I'm mm-hmm. glad you. I'm glad you shared that experience. I'm glad you shared that experience. Go ahead, Nia. Did you want to? Wait, it, no, I already said, you know, what, no, yeah, said, your yeah. situation. I was like, kudos. I was like, let me get that. I said, we already addressed it, but I thought that was very interesting that he actually saw the fault and he, he ended the relationship. I thought that was, mm-hmm. int- he ended the the relationship and he, he got a job and wanted to go back and she wouldn't take him back. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's why I said, seek counseling. He ends up, it, it, what, so, you, so in this recognize situation, it was you, you should have went to counseling. But here's the thing. So in this case, he was upset. He would start the arguments. And it had nothing to do with her. He, once he ended the relationship, because just like what Nick was saying, you know, he ended it because of how he felt. He ended up getting a job and wanted to come back. And of course, I think it was like a six month lap. And she was like, no, now I wouldn't give him look my opinion at that time either, but I'll, I'll share mine. Now the problem is to me, the reason that she didn't, not even a problem. The reason she didn't take you back is because whatever hurt that she probably felt, she doesn't want it again. Right. And there's no guarantee that. That behavior, that whatever she experienced, because we don't know her experience, mm-hmm. that behavior may return if you're in the same position. So that's just my thoughts. That or look, she could be that he left and she's still mad at him. It could be that too. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, think about it. Like you left and I right. look, I was holding you down. It did, that says, look, the word of the day, right. hold you down. I was going to hold him down. And you left mm-hmm. anyway right. from your yeah, own, I mean. but there was nothing. And when you look at that, and we do sling that word around abuse around so much, but when you look at it, it's like, okay, you verbally attacked me. Let me use attack instead of abuse. Cause you know, abuse had you look downtown somewhere, <laughs> not, <laughs> right. not assault. Uh, verbally attacked me and I got all of that and then stressed me out at work the whole night because you're upset with yourself. You got to find another pension bag. And 
I know if I left or if you left and I finally got to that place where I was able to be complete and back whole again and you want to come back to do what? Nah, it ain't going to happen. Go ahead, Nick. A, a viewer said it's because he showed her who he is when things got bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bruh, we, I know you, you listening. <laughs> Counseling. That ain't nothing wrong with it. But that's ain't exactly, nothing wrong with it. But that's exactly what I was saying. How do we know you won't exhibit that same behavior if it, right. you know, if it comes <laughs> back again? We just don't no, at right. all. Sir, right, sir. Ain't nothing wrong with counseling. Ain't nothing wrong with letting your woman hold you down for the moment. It's you down. You, you, you know. All you right. Know you better go be down that long. All right, all right, all right. It's time for the hot topics. Nia, you want to hang out with us for the hot topics? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Listen, he was up. To get on out, up for parole. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was up for parole. Oh. Went there, they declined it. <laughs> they declined it. They said he didn't do everything that he was expected to do. Now, did you see? Did they release it yet? Because I wanna, I'm gonna keep you guys up on that. Did they release it yet? What he didn't do, Nick? Yeah, he did. He refused to go to counseling. <laughs> <laughs> Say that. Oh, <laughs> Look, you see that, right? Right, right. You want it? You got it? You got it? You got it? I'm like, Nick, you want to handle that? He refused to go to counseling. How do you go to counseling for something that you shouldn't have been in jail for in the first place? And see, and that's it. Listen, I I feel you. I feel you on that. And I have my thoughts. In here. Okay, you know what? Boom, panel of females. You. What's your thoughts on the Bill Cosby? I'm gonna go with you, Nia, first. With me, he should have never been in jail. Sex, ro- sex, drugs, and rock and roll was going on back then. If you was taking it, you knew what he was doing. You were there. Now it's different from being raped. Now being and and I don't think none of them were okay. I'm just gonna put that out there. I don't think they were. I think they was hyped in a minute. Oh, this Bill Cosby, oh, we can get here and there, and that we can do this and that and the third. Coming back 30, 40 years later, talking about what you did. Nah, you then started, you got your platform, you then started, you done rose to the top. It ain't you can't do that now. That's that's not right. But that's my I'm not on the Me Too moment movement. That's not me. But to each his own, that's how I feel. I didn't see too many men. Um they talk to young girls, and young girls lie about their age. I've seen, um, in, in, in Ohio, you can be 16 and talk to somebody older, and it's okay. Like, why are these men doing it? I think once people, when people are, when women are raped, and, um, oh, no, I lost my train of thought. I forgot what I was about to say. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not on the, I, I'm for bill, like, free bill. <laughs> okay. Get out. I'm not going to, that's just my take on it. Okay, go ahead, Nick. I feel the same way she does. I don't think he should have ever gone to jail because why are you waiting 30 years later when this man is had the platform that he had? And the thing is, nobody said anything. No kind of charges were brought. Nothing. Nobody even thought about it until this man was talking and in the works to buy NBC Network. Then all of a sudden, here all these people come. Why you wait till this man got, got to this age and at this status and he get ready to buy a whole network, a, a whole major network. Now all of a sudden y'all coming out the woodworks to knock this man down. So no, I, no, mm-mm. and oh, no, no, mm-mm. just no. I know. I know what I was going to say. Um, when, uh, until women who lie about being raped are brought charges upon, this will continue. Yep. Okay. Well, y'all know what I said. He wasn't leaving Camille. You was down for it before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oops, it just didn't work. It didn't work in your favor. And I I do have an issue with... I think it did work in their favor. That's just it. It worked in their favor because you didn't, you progressed in your field, your career for the 30 years. Back, back, to, the, look, back to the casting couch, right? Here, here's the thing. I, I don't... He was guilty of 
said having sex with these women. He offered, and, and, and it still it still boggles my mind. He offered you tea. <laughs> I don't even have another. He offered you ecstasy or whatever it was. You chose to take that. Like, I don't understand. So you made a conscious, because you were clear, a conscious decision to get high. And now you mad? So I get it. I get it where um, Nia's like counseling for what? He didn't do anything wrong. The, and that's from him. Or but from R. Kelly. Now, but still that R. Kelly thing is ignorant to me when you actually sell your child. Let's be honest. And the man actually, yes. the man said he was the Pied Piper. I told y'all, y'all better so, do y'all yeah, research. Y'all yeah, better. Man, the man, listen. The, and see, that's what these people are telling you. Like, and you choose. He been hollering he was the Pied Piper f- since I can remember. Now, if you don't know this, if you, right, if you don't know the story of the Pied Piper, you, before you even listen to stuff, like, you just, what's uh, what's the uh, one, uh, DJ Khaled, and another one, okay, I need to know what, what was another one, okay, another hit, right. I got it, R. <laughs> Kelly was talking about the Pied Piper. You sitting there line dancing. I'm the Pied Piper, y'all. He telling you he's the Pied Piper. Please look he's up. Sure he the Pied Piper but, when he married Aaliyah. But listen, listen. He told you. See, you ain't you ain't got to show me nothing. I'm gonna listen to what you say. <laughs> Just like in a relationship, I'm gonna listen to what you say. Now, if you don't produce, then okay. He told you. He was so honest. He told them he was the Pied Piper, and now y'all acting crazy. And here's the deal. Those parents, even after Aaliyah, those parents still, they brought their children forward. He said he was the Pied Piper. If he said he's the Pied Piper, he could, y'all clearly made him the Pied Piper and he knows it. And if y'all took money as a bribe so y'all can be quiet, y'all need to go to jail too. So no, me too movement and not here. Y'all don't get my sympathy. I'm out. Right. And, and see, you know what? See that whole Me Too movement? See, even with Bill Cosby, I, you offer me if you, if I know I'm allergic to strawberries and you say here goes some strawberries and here's some cantaloupe. And if I decide to take them strawberries, it's my fault I got all these it's all on my face and can't breathe. Mm-hmm. That that would be I did that. Melissa, let's go back to if you come into my house at 2 o'clock, what you think gonna happen? Thank okay, you. Mike? Now see, <laughs> see that's that's what Nick was saying. Now yeah, you, you it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. If it's a party and it's a whole bunch of people, then that's the after party. But guess but what? Even at the after party, listen. Even at, I'm with you. Even at the after party, if you decide to go in the back room and decide not to take the tea and take the drugs, there you go. Like you said, sex with sex now drugs you want and to rock and roll. Too. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's what he was doing. But I do like the fact that you right. said, exactly. um, that statement that you made that until the people who falsely accuse people of rape are brought up on charges, this will continue and you want to hashtag me too. Now, could he have gone to counseling? Had he gone to counseling, they would have pretty much said he's admitting guilt. Yeah, and he, I mean, yeah, he'll probably be there forever. And so he, how, long right. he, how long does he have to do? Because uh, I don't know. It, it was life. like, it pretty much, it, they didn't say life sentence, but for his age, it pretty much was like a life. Yeah, and yeah. I ain't mad at him for doing it. No, I'm not going to counsel for what? Because guess what? Here's the deal. And, and I'm with him on it. That will not be my legacy. If I sat there and, did right. it and admitted to guilt just to get off, because a lot of people without money admit to guilt. We have a lot of young men who are in jail and really young because they don't want to put any more stresses on their parents. You know, like, oh, well, we can't afford it. Okay, I'll plead to that. I'll say I did that knowing that they didn't. That happens to a lot of our young men because we don't have or they thinking that we don't have the money for an attorney, but it's so many different agencies out there where there are free attorneys that will represent you. So for the listening audience out there, listen, if you know you didn't do it, don't admit to it and don't worry about, because honestly, I'm going to say this as a parent, 
Don't worry about not causing your parent more grief because they don't have the finances because it'll be more grief when you are behind those bars and the parent outside is going to have to take care of you. You know, even though you know you didn't do it, you got to take care of you for whatever sentence that they give you. And trust and believe it is not fair for us. I just had to put that out there. So if you know you didn't do it, no. And for that with Bill, I commend them. Because that, what will happen is that will supersede all the good that he did. And that Mm -hmm. will be his legacy. No, he he refused. And it's like, nah. No, you brought the you brought the happy black family to the TV because I am I, I love the Cosby Show and right. show the successes. Right. So that's probably what the issue is. He built up all our self esteem and gave us direction. Like, yeah, you can be success, a successful black family. Oh, we don't need him. Let's hurry up and tear this man right. down. Right. <laughs> you know. So there you have it. Look, I'm like, there you have it. Now, let's move on. I was trying to get, I'm going to try to figure out if I can play that on here or not. Um, There was, before we get to the uh, Jason Lee story, um, I want to get to, there was a young, I can't remember what state they were in, 14 years old, ninth grader, dating a senior who turned 18. There they are. That's the they I'm using. <laughs> T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. They are trying to charge him with statutory rape. A ninth grader. And see, here's a, a ninth grader dating a 12th grader. So 14, for some unknown reason, we tend to put 14 at 12. And then 18 at like 21, like he's grown, he should know better. But they're both still in high school. And parents are trying to bring him up on statutory rape charges. First, What's your thoughts on that? First question: Are they both black, both white, mixed? What's what's mixed relation? What's, what is it? First, give me that, and then and you all because I told it it matters. He's no. black and she's Caucasian, and she's exactly. the ninth grader, and he is the twelfth grader. Exactly. Well, actually, actually, he's mixed. So no, you know one percent. It, it definitely matters. It definitely matters because we are we live in a city. We grew up where that's usually you're in the ninth, you're in the twelfth. That's fine. Nothing's wrong with that. But for some reason, these white these white young girls in a lot of date they're already mad already, and then that's trying to figure out how to break that break it apart. So yeah, it does matter. I feel like it does matter. I wanted to get the answer first and then see how it changed. Oh, no, no, but that's no, okay. No, but yeah. I, I, you, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with you being a freshman. If that's the case, then I tell you what: put the seniors in another school and let the little kids, little kids, be in another school and let so they won't um, congregate. How about that? But no, no, there's nothing wrong with it. But I had a feeling that because you know, of it was that, more that's to that story. Was, it's a hot topic, so you know it was going to be more. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, go ahead, Nick. Well, I was in that situation because I was a little fast tail. And I was always dating older boys, and, you know, sneaking because when my mother found out that they were 18 and I was only 14, 15, uh-uh. you can date when you get a little bit older, then you can date, you know, but no. What did they bring the boys up on charges? No, it just was like you flat out can't, but me being me, being a little faster, I wasn't sneaky at that time. Yes, I will admit now that I'm grown, I was hiding in the tail. So therefore, I found a way to mess with them older boys. But when my parents found out, you know, it it wasn't none of that 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 foolishness. It was just like, no, no, we're not allowing you. As long as you're under our roof, you won't go by our rules. Now, when you get a little bit older and you want to date somebody, that's fine. But right now, you're 14, he's 18. That's a no go. Okay. But yes, I was always sneaking them in the house because, you know, <laughs> by that time my dad was working in Chicago, my mom was working midnight, you know, over the hospital in war and everything. You know, was but yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sneaking in the house. As a freshman, though, I was sneaking. I was <laughs> no, no, But no. you know what? Now, now, I started in eighth grade. But, but I started in eighth grade. But listen, but now. <laughs> Now they are trying to merge seven, just eliminate the middle school and put seventh graders with high schools 
well, high yeah. schoolers, and that will cause an issue. That will potentially cause an issue. Why would they oh, just leave stuff alone? Like this country is uh oh, just leave it alone. And if that girl wanted to find a way, they he could stop talking to her. He's like she said, he's going to find she was going to find a way to get to him. But that's mm-hmm. what they because of that, that's boom, let's let's put up charges. That's it, that's all. Nope. Yeah, that yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now you know, I, I I I do know someone whose child was twelve and was a fast tail at that time and was lying about her age and was messing with somebody that was my age at the time. We was like twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, somewhere around there. You know, he was brought up on charges and, you know, went to jail because she was twelve. Was you know, like, our age, but yeah, the, he, you know, it was still, you know, that statutory rape, so he did have to serve some time. After he found out how old she was, he still did what he did. So, oh, okay. yeah, he yeah. still. Well, he found out, and he still continued. Or, you know, what about the people that grew up in the church and then they get pregnant and then they lie about being raped because they don't want to be shamed? I know somebody who went through that and that was right. tragic. That was so tragic. But I don't know if that person, I think that person ended up getting pregnant again so it all came out or that person had enough people to say that ain't the kind of dude he is. He ain't raped nobody. But that was tragic until women are brought up on charges and get the same sentences as these men who they're lying on, uh, that actually, you know, then that's when something's going to change. Until then, it's not. And you are oh, right. So the, uh, uh, you want to know, a viewer just want to know what age did she lie and say they were, they were curious. She lied and said she was 17 and at the age of 12, she was built like a brick house. Okay. So, she it was see. easy for him to believe it. At see, first. see, and that, that's, That's not okay. There was a guy in Cleveland that I knew very well who ended up doing time because he met the girl at the nightclub. I think we talked about this too a few years back. Mm -hmm. And he met her at a nightclub and he asked for ID and she had a fake ID, took it to court and they still found him guilty. He asked her for ID and she showed it. And in court, she brought the ID was brought up. And he still was found guilty. I said, no, nah, you just found a reason to railroad him. Uh, we're going to talk about um, mm-hmm. Angela Stanton. Angela Stanton was on um, the Jason Lee's Hollywood. What is it? Uncensored. Hollywood Uncensored. Uh, mm-hmm. Jason Lee, he, he's uh, um, a podcaster as well. And they made it. They actually put the title as... Um, Angela Stanton calls Jason Lee's mom a crackhead hoe. Now, <laughs> the way that it came out, Nick, you saw that? Did you see that article? Girl, yeah. I, I watched it like three times. Then I watched the whole thing. Okay, let me catch the listeners and the viewers up. The listeners and the viewers. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, okay, and it all started, she was actually, okay, it all started because Angela Stanton's son is in the LBG t- LBGTQ community. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Hopefully I got it right, y'all. And he um he wants to be a girl now. And he wants to change his name. And his, like, everybody else calls him by whatever name it was. But his mom and dad said, we named him mm-hmm. such and such. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Okay, yeah, and that's what we're going to call him. And he was, uh, Jason Lee goes to say, well, you, he tried to be smart and said, well, you was in jail talking about the type of mother she was. And he, Jason Lee talked about his mother being on crack. And what she actually said, what Angela said is, okay, so your mother, her name is whatever. She wouldn't want to be, you know, um, what she going to, just because she wants to go by a crack it. Ho or something like that doesn't mean that you're gonna call her that. And I'm let me see. And 
I'm going to play this and I want to know what your thoughts are. Regard, I didn't, I'll leave my comment to myself. <laughs> As a mother, I'll just let you listen to the audience. Here you go. Let me see if I can get it right. Let's just get for real for a minute. When we're, and, 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 and I want to be clear because there are a lot of articles and a lot of media reports out and a lot of people that try to make it seem as if I do not love my son or that I am against the LGBTQ community. I am not against the LGBTQ community. I have plenty of friends. I'm sure you all know Kellen Derrick. Ask Kellen Derrick who helped him start his business in his basement in his kitchen. That was me. I got plenty of friends in the community. A lot of people try to compare my son to Shauna. When I met Shauna, Shauna told me her name was Shauna. I ain't never been in Shauna pants. Shauna is my friend. Shauna is not my son. What Shauna does does not impact my life. I am a mother. If there is a disorder or if there is whatever it is that my son wants to identify with that leads him to believe that he is a woman, and if that process is going to lead to dismemberment or castration, as a mother, I have a right to protect my lifeline and my bloodline. Now, you can roll your eyes in the back of your head all you want, but I have the right to protect. I'm not talking to you too, sir. I'm talking to Miss Blue over here. I, I have wasn't rolling eyes at all. To, as a mother, a I don't have to agree, but, but it's not hate. It's not, and but, and, and you also have to understand. This is what you also you have to understand. Way, but this is what your child said about your relationship with the gay community because they did say exactly what you just said. So I want to make sure to validate what you said. But this is what JB said on the show about your relationship. I saw Joni or something crazy. Angela actually has a lot of gay and trans friends. Believe it or not. That's her son. Angela has a lot of gay and trans friends. She has a lot of gay and trans friends. She just did an interview the other day with Shauna Brooks. Um, do you guys know who Shauna is? Yes, yeah. Trans girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So trans girl, she respects her pronouns. <laughs> she respects Oh, get out of here. Are she, you serious? Yeah. She respects wait, her wait, pronouns. Wait, wait. She, okay. I'm gonna okay. fast forward a little bit. Um uh, past that she um, that was her daughter speaking and she was saying that her mother his mother I don't know which one we want to go with because he didn't actually have the surgery yet um, respects her friends more than him but that is a mother and he wants to be called something different and she won't call him what he wants to be called what's your mm -hmm. thoughts on that from you know as a mother Silence. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't I don't know. Um am I going first? Nick yeah. can go first. Nick can go first sometimes. I don't have children. She don't have children. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh wow. Um <laughs> I don't know how I'll be with my child. But I will say this for me. There's a lot of people who grew up in the church who are flamboyant. There are people who are gay, who are lesbians that I stayed away from for a long time because y'all know goodwill, this ain't right, right? But I come to realize. And my last fast, it's not up to me. I still got to treat them the way that I didn't treat them. I didn't disrespect anybody. I just stayed away. But now I have realized I have to treat them the same way that I did before I even knew any of it. It's up to them. How I would treat my child, I would have to do the same thing. <sighs> that sounds deep. It is. It's because I, yeah. So that is, that I, I would have to do the same thing. I, I, you would have to. I mean, it's hard, of course, because you don't want to hear that. That's the last thing you want to hear. That you, yeah, it's the last thing you want to hear. But you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to. I get it, though. I get why she like it, because she's a mom. This how, you know, this, I raised you. I, this is the name I gave you. I'm mm -hmm. not going to acknowledge that. So I get it, but I had to step back and realize that I was 
keeping some people away and distance and looking at them like, why are you doing this? And you grew up in the church and now y'all want to act like this is right. So, okay, let's yeah. see. Let's see what mom said. Shauna didn't come out my body. I didn't raise Shauna. I knew my son had a penis before he did. What you all are asking me to do as a mother, you're asking me to lie to myself about who I know my son is. Now, he's beautiful. He 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 has an awesome personality. He's intelligent. I love him. I just do not agree with the confusion. I, again, I'm his mother. Now, you all don't have to agree with me. But that's my child. Does your mother agree with everything y'all did? No, Damage has a question, and I want to be clear, Angela. I don't want to fight with you. I'm not here to um, to uh, force you to understand or believe anything. What I'm trying to do, and so if I can just ask, if we could try to all bring it down a little bit so we can get to a place where we can both talk and hear each other, right? I'm not going to attack you for being a gay man who believes that anybody who identifies however they identify should be respected as such, because that's what I believe. Now I, I, I want to get to the heart of what the reason is why you refuse to accept your child's pronouns. Hold on. Not, and, and, and I'm trying to understand, is it because you're a mother who's trying to hold on to the identity they want for their child and not embrace who they see themselves to be? Is it ignorance? Is it just what? I don't know what it is. That's why we're here to have this conversation. I, I'm, a mother, I, I'm a mother that knows exactly what she gave birth to. I gave birth to a man child. If, if my man child decides, right, and, and we can talk about science because I know a girlfriend got a hell of a degree over there. We can talk about science and we can talk about what's facts. And what's facts is even once you go all the way through with the transition, because I do have plenty of friends that are in the movement, you still have that realization that you are not a biological female. So as a parent, what I'm saying is, son, hold on. Just like you said, Jason, you said when you was younger, you had been with women, like you gave yourself time to, to figure out what it was that you wanted. My okay, see, they tried to, look, people tried to come in there. And uh, I, that's off of a YouTube. And he mm. tried to uh, hurry up, and I didn't want to. That advertiser tried to slide on in there. So there's a mother who it here, here's voicing her opinion of how she feels, and then you have Jason, who is clearly a gay man, trying to force his views. And fight for his cause. And trying to make her out to be a bad person. That's what it sounds like to me. That's just me. As a mother. As a heterosexual. Let's put that out there. You have gays. Okay. They want to be accepted. Got it. You're gay. You want to be accepted. Okay. I can accept you wanting to be exactly who you are. But accept me for who I am. So I can't voice my views. And that's what I believe that she's pretty much saying. Like, okay, so if I don't think like you, I'm now it's almost like the bully, the the bullied becoming the bully. It's like flipping. It's like you didn't like the way it felt when you weren't accepted, but now you're not even trying to hear what I have to say. You know, the bully becomes. The bully becomes the bully. That's it. It's, it's flipped. Go ahead, Nick. Say the ending part. What happened? Um, She got real, real ignorant. He had to get real ignorant back. When she I called his mom. Me. The Yes. <laughs> oh, and he read her real, real well. And then continued to read her after they flipped her off. The thing is, from what they were saying, because I didn't watch the, the very beginning, I went to the whole hour you know, so mm -hmm. they said she came off raw from the gate and being disrespectful from the gate. So I have to go back and watch the beginning of it, but I did watch the whole ending. I went back and watched the whole hour and watched the ending after they ended that little segment of the, that little clip. Mm -hmm. I went back and watched the other one and they continued to read Girl from while she was gone um, after they had to click her off. But they said she came ignorant from the gate. Okay, the part that you heard was the gate. I didn't think she came off ignorant. I thought she was just very direct. That was the very beginning, what I showed you. 
Yeah, I mean, what I had yeah. you guys here. No, I mean, I'm, I saw the whole hour. Mm-hmm. And, so, well, I remember mm-hmm. like the very, very beginning, but, you know, after, from the part that, that you, the, the one clip that you sent, and then after they clipped her off, they continued with the show and everything, but right. from what after. three of them were saying, she, at the very beginning of the show, she came out of pocket immediately. She came defensive. Okay. Yeah, she yes. Yes. Yeah. She came defensive. The clip that I just played was the beginning. But here's the deal. She had already heard what everybody was saying. That's why it's a big thing. No, that's why it's a hot topic. Right. Because she had, she has friends that are gay. But she said, she was like, but I didn't birth them. And her issue is, and she she did not discredit her son. She actually spoke highly of him. What she said was just like, her son is only 19 years old. Let's put that on there. He's he's only 19, which is key to why she responded the way she did. Mm -hmm. Jason Lee is an adult. She said she want to make sure it's not confusion. You know, just coming in um, like, okay, something's going on. This is what I'm going to do. Or coming in and like, okay, I'm gay and I want to go ahead and have the surgery. Whoa. What she's saying is give it time. Give it time and be sure that's what you want to do. Jason said he dated females, so he were he was able to see. She to was work like, his way through. right. So he's in his thirties, and then you have a nineteen year old that's like, boom, and I'm a female, and I'm getting ready to, like she said, castrate herself. She's and she's made it clear, I birthed him, versus, you know, her friends who are in the transit. She said. I, I understand the movement. I'm with it, but know what it is because that's so permanent. Mm-hmm. And it's different when you have children, even with making not decisions as such, that's permanent. Like she was saying in basic decisions as a parent, as a aunt, as who, are, you know, we all have someone young looking up to us. And if they come to you for advice, you got to give them everything. And I, me personally, I don't think that she's wrong. She birthed him. I'm not going to call him Shauna or whatever his name is. She's And she says she's not going to use that pronoun of she. She birthed a he. And that's who he will be. That's her son. And that should be her choice, just as he has a choice. So it's almost like the nicknames. Let's, be, let's take, bring it on back a little bit. You might have a nickname out in the street, but you can't expect your mother to be calling you Lil Yee. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you might call me what up, Lil Yee. But in the house, who you Yonza? You know what I mean? Or your nail. You know, you are whoever. Not no. You can I call saying, I call saying ye. I be like, no. No, you know, you could be Lil Yee out there, but in here, this is the birth name. This is the name I gave you. Me and your dad chose this name, and that's not my child, but I'm just giving an example. Right. This is your birth name. So I don't understand why it's such a fight with a mother who is refusing to call her child something other than what she named him. Elaborate, ladies. Tell me. Talk to me. I'm I'm speechless actually. I don't really have I I mean I think she's taking it personal. She said something in there and it made me think, you know, you're taking it personal. You you're saying it's not about it's it's not about her. It's about him and him being comfortable. But I didn't know he was nineteen, so I definitely get it because you're young. But he also probably I mean can he probably already tried. And he just knows that's what it is. He doesn't want to do it anymore. He wants to be a girl. Okay. I had a friend um, who's gay and his dad was against it. His dad passed and that's when he came out. He was married, I want to say, for 23 years to a female. Had three children. He came on the show. This We were on uh, WASN at that time, 1500, AM 1500. And um, he came on and he kept that secret. Now we got, and I'm, my thoughts as a female, don't bring me into your mess. If that's how you felt, why bring me in? Like, if right. you know you don't like women, don't get with me and then be on the down low. Right. So I asked a million dollar question. 
were you a virgin prior to marriage? And he said, yes. So in his situation, he wasn't sure. He was unclear. Once, mm -hmm. And he said the wedding night, he was so nervous. And everybody realized he was nervous. He said he got so drunk because he did not want to perform because he knew he was attracted to men. Mm -hmm. he, and he said he kept drinking, drinking and drinking because he was like, oh, my gosh, this, this has to happen. Oh, he was not excited about that happening to a female or with a female. Mm -hmm. then, then I had the other questions. How did you have three children for his dad? All this was for his dad. His mother was fine, was alive, and he felt that he could talk to his mom. But his dad wouldn't accept it, so I need to do this for my dad. And he, he told his mom he was? No, he never told his mom, but he knew she oh, was oh. okay, you know. But for his dad, he was going through the motions. 23 years. And he, I said, well, how did you have three children? And guess what he said? He, he said he didn't have much sex with her. And he imagined a man when he was with his wife. Mm, mm, mm. Right. I love the honesty and I love the truth. And I said, wow. Interesting enough, on that particular show, she called in. The best friend called in, you know, and he would make dresses. He would do everything. But he said that him and his wife were best friends through high school. He said it was perfect because her being his girlfriend, he was the best boyfriend because he would go to the mall shopping with him. That was the things that he liked to do. And that was the way that he passed himself off. He's the boyfriend. There you go. And every time they did things, they baked and all that. They had so much in common. They were like best friends. At that moment, um, when he actually was on the show, he had just come out maybe six months prior. So his children were speaking to him. They're grown. They were grown now at that time. Um, well, still. And his wife didn't speak to him. But he didn't come out until his dad died. And that's when he let everybody know. So you have a lot of people who stay in character, so to speak. And actually, it keeps... Most of us, we always, we have that one person that we don't cross the line because of this individual. Like back in the day, you know, I was rapping. I probably could have been Trina. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out there, boom, boom. But I already knew I can't rap about this with my grandmother. My grandmother wouldn't even have it. You know, I'm like, what? So you have that person that you have respect for and you worry about their name my grandfather always says um you have your name your name is everything you know and our ancestors your name is everything so it's like okay well I don't want to ruin the family name where now this younger generation I don't even think they even care about the name or I think disappointing the, uh, yeah the, the the name is the legacy and let's be real. Let's just think for a second, which real quick, just, just roll with me. You know, I love imagery. <laughs> what is, when you think of a negative last name, did you get it yet? Just say yes or no. Nick, did you get it? In your neighborhood, a last mm -hmm. name. Did you get it? Yes or no? Is it in your head? Okay. Mm -hmm. Show Hannah. Go ahead, Nia. I got one. See? interesting what's yeah. in a name so you look at it and as soon as you hear that last name that's their legacy right and that's terrible yeah, so so you like immediately like <laughs> and, and it's like boom so if you are in the position now we're adults you're in a position to hire that resume comes across your desk you see that last name what's the first thing you think of See, right. Mm -mm. And and mm -mm. that's exactly. why all you have is your name. If you don't get nothing else from today's show, get this. Savor the name. And just like with uh, Bill Cosby not going to counseling, he ain't did nothing. And that will be admitting guilt. Guilt. That is that name. Mm -hmm. What is your legacy? And that's what we mm -hmm. have to push on to. Our young adults, they're not looking at the legacy. You look at, there's, if, if you look at the people that are strange, and I'm going to say strange, 
different, strange, out of the ordinary, go all the way out. And you'd be like, why would you do that? They're like, they don't have children. Most of them don't have children. If you look on television, you'll be like, oh, okay. So they don't, that child doesn't have to bear their burden once they're long gone. Right. And you know, you look, you'd be like, now, why are they acting like that? They are not that type of person. Cutthroat. That child doesn't have to bear that last name. And not everybody in that family is bad, but that last name has a stigma to it. Right. And it's, it matters. So my suggestion to everybody right now that's listening and viewing, please, you still got time. Instilling your children. What are you doing? You out there hoeing and all the rest of that stuff. That last name. You want to rob so-and-so that last name. When you go and you see the whole family of last names, and then you see a little person with that last name, you're like, aha, let's interrupt the pattern. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, let me love on this child. Let's see what's the issue here. What's going on? You know, so as an adult, you see that last name, you see the little ones coming up. Let's embrace them to try to help them. Because I'm going to tell you, that last name, it carries. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, God. Thanks, Neil, for coming on. Nick, I will yeah, see you. I will, I will come back. You come back. You can come back, girl. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome. Come on back anytime, and we can shop, talk. On Monday, 4 p.m., that is the holiday. Brown Skin is the name of the show. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it out there. It's a bunch. It's women. It's a meeting in the ladies' room. Hey. And we definitely going to talk. And please, please, if you are sensitive and your ears are sensitive, do not tune in because um, <laughs> <laughs> it is not the show for you because it is clear and uncut conversations about us. If you're going to get upset about something, don't turn it on. Because yeah. we're going to keep it 100. And, right. and I definitely want to let people know it is us that are all that are going to be on there, not our professional hats. So let's be clear. I but guess what? What? Now, I'm off from my day turn job on Monday. So guess who here with you? I'll see you. I will see you. I'll be broadcasting from another um, city, I think, or state. Wherever. I don't okay. Know. But. I'll be there. I know what to do. We got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Lovely people. Find you. Embrace mm -hmm. you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people. Shop talk right here on your ass. Mm -hmm.